Hey guys, it is Baby Kendall here. Welcome to a brand new Clash of Clans video, and today we are going to talk about the current meta Town Hall 9 base building. Uh, and so this is something that I thought I had to make a video on because um, for the first time in what seems like a year or so, air attacks are finally making their return. Uh, not only at Town Hall 9, but really at all Town Hall levels, because in the December 2016 update, uh, what Supercell did is they actually buffed the balloons, and this has just uh, made air attacks so much more popular. Uh, in fact, I'm seeing them more than half of the time uh, in our wars. Like if I go into our wars and I just go scroll down to Town Hall 9 attacks, I guarantee you more than half of them will be Laloon based attacks or some baby dragon attacks sprinkled in there but mostly Laloon and um, don't get me wrong hogs are still very powerful they haven't really been nerfed at all um, so there's definitely they're definitely a still very viable strategy so now you've got air and you've got ground to defend against it used to be uh, most people just sort of focused on defending against ground because that's what you know that's all people used uh, but now you have to defend against both so ideally you want to have a balance between anti-ground and anti-air in your base because if you make your base too much anti-air then it'll get crushed by ground and vice versa so this base I have on the screen right now is a pretty good example of a current meta base uh, at Town Hall 9 so um, before I do begin into this base explanation I just want to um, say that this base was not created by myself it was created by uh one of my friends in clash of clans his name is shards and uh he is in a clan called legacy division he actually has a youtube channel uh i will link that down in the description below this is that's where i actually got this base design from and i asked him if i could use this in my video and he said of course so um i built it and i'm just gonna use this base as, as an example to show you guys some of the best features of a current meta town hall 9 war base uh, feel free to copy it if you want um or feel free to make your own which is what i recommend because uh you can sort of put your own little style into it and maybe fix some mistakes that shards didn't catch uh when he was building this base so um yeah i just wanted to say that and anyways let's get right into the video here uh so i will explain this base uh first about the anti-air features and then after that about the anti-ground features because like i said you do want to defend against both and this space i think does a very good job defending defending against air and ground attacks at town hall 9. so starting off with anti-air obviously the most important part of air attacks as well as well um for the attacker and the defender is the air defenses so on this space you might be a little bit um, puzzled to see that the air defenses are all up here at the top left and um you might question that but it, that actually works as a good anti-air feature of a base because what happens is that uh, even if the attacker comes from up here with let's say two golems and their heroes and uh, you know, wizards, maybe even bowlers or something, I don't know. And even if they do manage to take out all four of these air defenses, uh, they have the rest of the base that the balloons and lava hounds have to go through. And first of all, the lava hounds won't be tanking at all because all the air defenses are down and they'll just be moving from defense to defense. And that's uh, really ineffective because the wizard powers can still hit the balloons uh, along with the lava hound at the same time. Uh, so, you know, that's just not a good use of the hound. And also, um, there's so many like air targeting defenses, not air defenses, but you know, Archer Towers, Wizard Towers, Teslas, that can all damage your uh, hounds and balloons. And also the all the uh, air traps, like the air bomb seeking air mines, are all uh, on this bottom right side of the base. So when the attacker comes in with his air phase of the attack, he'll have to deal with a lot and both sweepers are pointed towards this direction. So it'll be uh, almost impossible for balloons to get through this base unless the attacker has like a ton of balloons, which attacker won't because he'll be having to spend uh, a kill squad just to take out these air defenses. And believe me, just even taking out all four of these air defenses isn't easy because if you think about it, uh, if the attacker comes into this compartment, where the king and the queen is uh, even his queen will only be able to reach uh, 
these two air defenses and these two will be out of reach from this compartment right here so the attacker will have to do something really funky uh, to get these guys out of the way so like I was saying, uh, the attacker will have spent a good kill squad just taking out these four air defenses. They're not going to get any extra value. No Argent Towers, no Wizard Towers, no Air Sweepers, which ideally you do want to get in the kill squad uh, with a Gola Loon. But the attacker is not going to be able to do that. He'll be even lucky just to like um, get this whole section taken out because he also has to take out the Clan Castle and all that. But anyways... Um, Loon's Lava Hounds will just not be able to make it through this uh, section of the base. Just so much DPS, uh, so compact, and you know, it's just not going to work out. So, um, that's considering if the attacker does try to take out these four air defenses. But you guys might be thinking, uh, what if the attacker, you know, just ignores the fact that there are all four air defenses up here? What if, you know, he comes from the bottom with like a tiny kill squad or something like that and then just like pentas or something like that now uh that's also a problem uh not for the day of for the attacker uh because when he's dropping his lava hounds they'll be moving like all the way across the base to right here they once again won't be doing any tanking uh because the lava hounds will be up here at these air defenses while the balloons even like the guy fans them out or something they'll be targeting these defenses and um this base is sort of designed so that the balloons have to target the cannons first, which are more the more useless defenses, and the mortars first. So these archer towers, these wizard towers, and of course the sweepers are just going to be pushing back the balloons. Uh, you know, every, every few seconds, and the archer towers, which the towers doing tons of damage to them. All while the lava hounds are just sitting up here at these air defenses, just getting taken out by uh, you know these air defenses because they actually do a lot of damage, especially two of these level seven air defenses together on one hound uh, will take it down pretty quickly uh and let's say the attacker does come from like top or something with a penta laloon or something similar like that where it's just uh uh lava hounds and balloons no kill squad um what happened is that the lava hounds balloons will take out these further penta's all right but now uh, just like i sort of said earlier uh, the Lava Hounds and Balloons will clump up on top of each other because there's no more air defenses left. So then the Wizard Towers and the Air Bombs and all that will be able to take down uh, everything at the same time without having to like get distracted on the Lava Hound and the Balloons can like go behind, uh, which is what usually happens on a normal base. Um, so uh, yeah, another thing about this base is that it's very compact and. Um, thing about compact bases is that they're great at defending lots of types of attacks including hogs and balloons uh, because defenses are so close to each other not close enough so that the balloons can take out two things at once because if you guys didn't know balloons can actually take out two teslas that are right next to each other if they're under a rage uh, but this base doesn't have that and uh, like I was saying compact defenses makes it so that there's a lot more DPS coming at your troops at one time uh, usually on a spread out base what we have is that every single time you're uh, targeting a defense with your balloons um, that defense it's just only like one or two other defenses shooting at the balloons and they can just go from defense to defense and take everything out but on a compact base like this as soon as you drop some balloons like to this mortar or something everything over here is going to be hitting it everything on including the sweeper all of that hitting your balloons at once is just just going to go down super super fast and um you know, it's just not going to work out on such a compact base like this. And like I said earlier, uh, this base is designed so that the balloons have to hit these useless defenses first. So all this time, the Archer Towers, the Sweepers, pushing them back, uh, making it very, very hard for the attacker to get through. Uh, and, uh, you know, even if the guy, the guy drops like haste spells or something like that, I mean, that's a significant spell. Um we call it a spell like investment and uh, there's a lot of the base to go through so it won't be that easy now of course with the balloons being pretty op if the attacker is really skilled i mean he might be able to get past this base but uh you're just your average like noob attacker who like spams down all this stuff this no way it's gonna work because um like i've been saying just so much air targeting defenses uh also another thing the expos um 
usually you want to have both of your expos on air and ground mode so you can see this one is on air and ground but actually on th in this base uh, this one is on ground only and the reason for that is because it's over here uh, sort of protecting the heroes and the air defenses uh, with from the kill squad so you this expo is sort of uh, meant as a anti kill squad expo rather than just an anti air expo like this one is um, but usually on most bases you would want to have this on air and ground um, think about this expo is even if I put it on air and ground it'll be completely useless because uh, it only will start targeting the balloons once they get to these wizard towers and you really want your um, expos to start working on the balloons like when they're in the first layer with these archer towers and all that so even if I put it like this it really makes no difference because by the time the balloons get to these wizard towers um, you know, they'll already have taken out the whole archer tower layer and um, you know it's it just not gonna work out so uh, this one is on ground only. Um, I think that is it for anti-air. Uh, basically, what you should be getting out of this, if you want to create your own base, is that on one side of the base, you should have your queen and uh, four air defenses. doesn't really matter about the king. I just put it here to sort of defend the queen. Uh, so you want to have that. And on the other side of the base, you have all the rest of your archer towers, wizard towers, like all those air targeting defenses besides air defenses like the Expos, the Teslas, and uh, mo the majority of your air traps should be down here as well. Um, Expos should be set on air and ground 99% of the time. Um, and sweepers should be pointing towards uh, the, not towards the air defenses, towards the, uh, all those wizard towers and archer towers. Uh, now this base is a little bit uh, weird but the cannons are actually over here and I said that serves a purpose because the balloons will target these first but normally on these types of bases you want to have most of your cannons up here with the air defenses so then it's sort of like this is an anti-ground a zone because the cannons actually do a ton of damage to hogs and you know whatever ground troops the attacker might have and then down here you would have an anti-air zone with all the archer towers and the wizard towers uh, but this base is a little bit different but i will get into hogs in just a moment i just want to explain very quickly uh, how this base defends against that dragons slash baby dragons because um if you look at this base it might look pretty simple to uh take it out with like a dragon attack because you can just take out all these air defenses and just like uh, use dragons or baby dragons with the rest of the base but the problem with that is that um once again i want to reiterate it there's just so much dps with this compact base design if you i mean you might have space for like six or seven dragons or something but considering the sweepers considering all of this uh stuff the pack the packer has to get through all this before even getting to these archer towers um things will go down very quickly and of course like i said the sweepers will be such an annoyance um to the dragons or the baby dragons whatever the guy is using um and yeah i think that wraps it up for anti-air on this base hopefully i explained it well enough um let's move on to anti-ground and really the only ground attack that at least i'm seeing at tunnel 9 is hogs um golem avalanche you know not really a thing anymore because no one really uses dead zones but hogs are pretty much a dominant ground attack and really the only ground attack at town hall 9 so uh, how the space defends against hogs is uh number one the giant bombs so you can see that uh this base has four single giant bombs and uh so those of you that don't know single giant bombs are actually very effective at damaging hogs and uh, taking them out double bombs really don't work as well as they did before because supercell took away the 1.5 times damage to um to hogs by giant bombs so obviously two giant bombs will not be able to take out a group of hogs anymore uh so now single giant bombs i think are the way to go on most bases because uh single giant bombs will take out around 40 percent of a group of hogs health and considering that these two single bombs are right around all these wizard towers if the attacker is not prepared 
uh, his hogs will go down very very quickly or at the very least the attacker will be forced to drop a heal spell and uh, that's more um, of what these are for just really forcing the attacker to drop a heal spell uh, let's say the attacker like drops some hogs over here and it's boom suddenly there's a giant bomb if the attacker wants to save those hogs he's gonna have to drop a heal spell right here and most hogs will you know go target the tesla and this mortar because uh, it's very hard to have your hogs like directly target this cannon or something because they'll just redirect to the Tesla. They'll go to you know they'll trigger this giant bomb and the attacker will have to drop a heal spell to keep the hogs alive. Uh, so all the giant bombs you may notice are on the bottom right side of the base, including the bomb tower, um, and it's it's pretty standard for a base like this to have all most of your damaging stuff on the bottom right of the base. But like I said, on some other uh, types of bases with the same style like with these air defenses over here they have the cannons on this side of the base and sometimes uh, the base designers would put like a few giant bombs up here as well just to defend against kill squads you can do that if you want in your own base but this specific base has all the giant bombs here on the bottom and it works out pretty well um, and also next these spring traps are a great defense against hogs the spring trap placement on this base is absolutely amazing you can see the spring traps uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's all six spring traps right there, and um, it, it's just absolutely incredible on this base. This one could be improved a little bit, but you know that's okay. Uh, these spring traps, the really awesome thing about them is that they're not located on the first layer of defenses. Uh, so this one is located on the first layer of defenses, and that's not that good because the attacker can just drop hogs on this cannon and drop like a few hogs on this bomb tower. They take both defenses out at roughly the same time. The hogs move on to these archer towers, and this spring trap in the middle is just completely wasted. Um, however, with these spring traps, it, they're almost unavoidable because you can see, go from the mortar to the archer tower, uh, boom to this wizard tower, hogs get sprung. Uh, you go from this mortar to this Tesla to this uh, cannon to this archer tower, boom, hogs sprung. Archer tower, to, you know, it's very hard to de, uh, I guess, de-trigger these spring traps by uh, surgically placing hogs because they're not on the first layer they're actually on the second layer which makes it a lot harder uh last thing anti-hog is uh the skeleton traps they're both set on ground for this base because i feel like this base has enough anti-air protection that you sort of want to balance it out like i've been saying earlier uh, so both skeleton traps are on ground and obviously on the bottom of the base because uh, this is where all the dps is you just skeleton traps are just adding dps and you don't want them to be wasted uh, so you definitely want to place them where the hogs will go so that uh, they can do quite a bit of damage uh and yeah i think that is it for um it for that and uh, this base still has that offset queen, um, meaning it's not really a queen island, I guess, but it's still that offset queen, so, uh, you know, same principles from, like, over a year ago, uh, where that offset queen will force the attacker to either, uh, come, come take out this queen with, and get little value for it, they're only getting, like, two cannons, and then a bunch of, like, useless defenses, air defenses, like, really, they're not going to change a hog attack. The attacker's not getting any giant bombs with the kill squad if he tries to take out the queen. Or the other option uh, is the attacker comes from all the way over here, which is almost impossible to get from, like, this side of the base all the way over here to this archer queen. Uh, because there's so much DPS along the way, and uh, the pathing is a little bit weird with this expo island right there. Um, now, a weakness to this base might be if the attacker drops four quake spells uh, in between this expo and plank castle and opens up like uh, like 70% of the base. Um, but the thing about that, is even if the attacker does that, there's a uh, sort of a buffer zone, I guess, uh, with this you know, non-defensive structures right here, and um, the attacker will have to invest like a massive, massive kill squad uh, to even like get to the first layer with all these uh, wizard towers and archer towers, and like I said at the beginning of the video, if the attacker's doing an air attack, he won't be able to take out these two air defenses, at least uh, very easily, because the queen won't be able to reach them from th this compartment. Uh, so... Yeah, that is all I wanted to say for this base. 
I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I rambled a lot, but that's just really the nature of these base explanation videos for me to just talk about a base. I hope you guys understood what I was trying to say here. If you have any other questions, please comment down below. Uh, feel free to copy this base if you want to. Like I said, um, make sure to check out Shard's channel. I will have the link in the description, which I said at the beginning of this video. Also, uh, recommended CC for this base doesn't really matter as long as it's not like a golem or a lava hound. I prefer like um, a Valkyries or a baby dragon or some sort of clan castle of that sort will work for this base. Um, and yeah, that is it for this video. That is it for this base. And um, I will see you guys in the next episode. Peace out.